It's another Manly Monday, and I'm trepidatiously tackling this topic, but if I start wussing out of the tough stuff, um, what good am I for? Um, and I actually think that um, there's some understanding that can be reached here. You notice I got my Hulk shirt on, right? Because I love the Hulk. Those of you who watch my Twitch streams know my love for Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner. Um... But we are talking She-Hulk, this video, and the, the, about the phenomenon, do, 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 of the surprising number of guys who got royally triggered by this show. Now, caveats. I shouldn't have to say not all men, but not all men, okay? There's, uh, you will see, I'll get into nuances, but this is not, oh, all guys who didn't like the show are the problem. No, 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 no. If you take that tact, you will just be ignored because I'm saying right now, it ain't that, okay? Second caveat, it's only the first episode, so everything I'm saying only applies to the first episode. Critics, some critics anyway, who wrote reviews of it got the first four. So I have no idea what's coming. I'm just going based on what's publicly available. Um, Disney Plus is really good at first episodes. I can't think of a first episode of a Disney Plus show I didn't like. And I went on to not like um, at least two of the Disney Plus shows overall. So th those are the two sort of caveats. Uh, so please don't act like I'm talking about the whole show. Please don't act like I'm making predictions. And please don't act like I'm saying anybody who didn't like the show is somehow a problem. I'm not. If you like this sort of content, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K, because there's issues all around in this and... It hit a bunch of different ner nerves. Now, well, ner 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 I was Max Headroom there. Um, I have this. I have this theory. This is a bit of a tangent, but I'm going somewhere with it. I have this sort of joke theory that every show Eric Kripke makes. He's the, sh the original showrunner on Supernatural and the showrunner on The Boys. Every show he makes is digested completely differently between men and women, and those of us who don't fit neatly into either category are like, huh? <laughs> With all the takes, right? Um, Supernatural is definitely like that. I did not understand the the female reaction to Supernatural. I, I was the one, I, I was in the camp of, this is a really cool show about two brothers who are very different, um, but they, lo they love each other and sort of family generational stuff why is everybody obsessing about them taking their shirts off this is kind of gratuitous okay okay have your shirtless guys okay the boys is a is a, another interesting touch point because again men and women saw a completely different show and i think she hulk is another one where men and women saw a completely different show from each other and I think in part it's because it's Rick and Morty style comedy in a female voice. And the world was just not ready. Now, there are other issues surrounding She-Hulk. There was some drama pre-release, not post-release, pre-release that primed certain people to be like on edge about it and that was in part totally the fault of disney and its internal fighting but it's also the fault of the media who misreported the context and okay social media is not media they could only control it so much but i read actual articles written by publications that should know better that did separate the quote about women's bodies in the CGI in She-Hulk 
from what I interpreted to be the original context based on the entire clip. Um, the original context based on the entire clip was about the internal fighting at Disney. And this is not a new fight at Disney. It happened in Encanto as well with Louisa and certain executives not wanting a muscular woman in a Disney property. And it makes sense, right, from a completely cynical point of view that um, if little girls start wanting to be Louisa, Cara Dune, and She-Hulk, their incredibly profitable, you know, princess line collapses. And they have to develop a whole bunch of other characters so that they can, like, mass market fast fashion identity to children, well, through their parents. Um, but uh, what happened with the She-Hulk and the trailer, the admittedly not great CGI in the trailer and in certain parts on the show, is that there was so much fighting over how muscular to make her that they ran out of time and they rushed it because of that because that's well documented not that is not the official word from disney that's there were basically leaks to the media and then the showrunner basically confirmed that yeah there was internal fighting and the artist got crunched right the the technical artists who do the cgi got crunched and so it was unfinished. That's going to affect trailer footage too. So I do not believe for a second that the trailer was calibrated to start a culture war with the line about women's anger and fear. Now, in a perfect world, I would have preferred they didn't put it in precisely because it set people's teeth on edge. But you can't claim the marketing didn't let people know who Jen Walters was, okay? And who Jen Walters is is incredibly important to why a lot of people who know the comics were kind of going, huh? About the reaction to, it's basically two scenes, two and a half scenes, maybe three, depending on if you count the, the flashback montage as one scene or multiple scenes, but... There's basically two parts in the show. One, the flashback to Bruce Banner trying to help his cousin uh, and her not being great about it. Uh, and then is seen in a sports bar that has set teeth on edge and set triggers triggering and all that stuff. And I'm trying to be sympathetic to this. But it's hard for me, and I'm going to declare why it's hard for me. Because I think it's relevant to if you got a bad reaction from someone be because of the way you expressed the fact that you didn't like She-Hulk. You notice I said the way you expressed, not that you didn't like it at all, okay? It's because there has been a standard set by the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we are expected to take a certain amount of edgy humor that is not for everyone, okay? The jokes tend to be at the expense of women in some way, which is why I'm surprised by the reaction. Because when I objected to Tony Stark making a joke about invoking the right of Prima Nocte, I took nothing but shit, learned to take a joke, okay? People didn't go, yeah, okay, Iron Man making a rape joke. I don't care if it's historically actually happened or whether it was just a myth that's irrelevant to the context. And that's what people, that's how people defended that. One, it's just a joke. Two, Tony Stark's a dick. Three, oh, it didn't actually happen. It was propaganda. It doesn't matter. The point is, do we want a flawed hero making a rape joke after he's allegedly cleaned up his act some, you know, and said, I think he'd, he'd, uh, he'd gotten with Pepper at that point. But do we want that? 
in a movie that's supposed to be for everyone? Should it be something everybody can go and enjoy and we avoid that sort of edgy humor? Or isn't it, well, standard set because then they did it again. Fucking Whedon, man. Mule and Quim. I normally don't say it, but we were just supposed to take that. Oh, because he's evil. We have seen subsequently that on Asgard, women take their babies into battle and kick a guy in the balls multiple times for a hair prank. But we're supposed to believe a guy raised in that culture would talk that way to any woman. Oh, because he's evil. No sense of character voice. That's the problem I had with Joss Whedon. You notice again, it's about character and how challenging a film should be. Two. Three. Guardians of the Galaxy. I maintain this is just a mistake. Okay. Drax calling Gamora a whore. It's supposed to be a joke that he says things literally, ha, 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 but nothing about Gamora is literally a whore. Being promiscuous is not what a whore is. A whore is someone who, in a literal sense, has sex for money. It was violating character voice to make a cheap joke to get an easy giggle from a certain portion of the audience. All this is allowable. Based on that, a clobber joke about women's anger and fear, there's been a precedent for that. There has. That's just fact. Now, you may claim it's not the same, but that's subjective. The point is, there, there is a there is a precedent in the MCU for both cheap jokes that maybe weren't great ideas because they alienated a portion of the 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 audience and got oh it's just a joke um but also let's face it some pretty heavy-handed feminist messaging from captain marvel the black widow movie so on and so forth so if you know because that's the thing i heard most from guys who got triggered not just guys who were like eh I wasn't crazy about it all. I'll watch the next episode, but I don't know there are red flags here. Guys that just lost it. Okay. It was heavy handed. Now, some guys started that way. But there was a back and forth and and th then there was a, oh, okay, I didn't see it that way. Right? Um, One guy, interestingly was like he thought it was he thought it was cheap because let's face it she's essentially a white woman why is she complaining this guy was this guy was black and I'm like okay that's an interesting perspective that's that's not just being uh oh my god feminism that's yeah she's being a brat and this is where I get to character and context and who is this for because I brought up the boys earlier right the boys, any disgusting, difficult, offensive thing they do, fine. Say any foul word you want. Make any awful joke you want. If it feels out of character, I'm still going to say something. But that that show, it's, it's there to challenge. It is really, really blunt force satire. With some really excellent characterization, amazing pacing, incredible costumes. Like, it's a good show, but it hits like a hammer. Which is why I was really surprised to see people I know like that show. And a lot of people who don't, don't seem really put off by Rick and Morty. The reason I bring up Rick and Morty is one of the writers on Rick and Morty wrote the script to She-Hulk. And Rick and Morty, another one that the jokes just... <laughs> Right. And that's it. If that type of comedy isn't your cup of tea, you can't help that. Right. You can't force somebody to find things funny, which is why I bring up the previous precedent of oh, learn to take a joke when I'm like, I don't want rape jokes in my Avengers movies. I don't want 
I just don't want, um, among character voice things, I just don't want the only female Avenger at the time having to be subjected to that. I don't. It's not fun for me. Please make these movies more fun. Joss Whedon, fuck you, right? Uh, now, if you're asking me, and I, I'm doing this just as an empathy exercise from the people who didn't like She-Hulk, okay? Because that's not my argument for why it was a problem. My argument for why it was a problem is it violated the character. But I do get that people, as one person put it, they don't want their identity to be the enemy. I get that. Because that's how people like me felt when it's like, oh, rape joke. Awesome, Tony. Nice. That's not anti-hero territory. That's just, oh, fucking grow up. You know, but you could argue that's in character. And there are arguments for and against, right? Loki calling Natasha a mewling quim. I argue it's not in character. Other people say, well, he was controlled by the Mind Stone. He'd been through a bunch of shit. He's angry at the fucking world. You know, all right. Arguments for and against. You can't make the same argument with Drax just because his, his, the rules of his dialogue are so rigid, right? And I argue you can't make the same argument with Jennifer Walters because Jennifer Walters is canonically a lot. This is someone with absolutely no impulse control. She says and does shocking, blunt things. I mean, in one run of the comic, she got fired from work because she photocopied her butt at her bare ass and she's like how'd you know it was me it was a color copier jen she's green she hulk right so having her be blunt instrument it may not be for you you may not like her but it's totally in character and because it's totally in character Especially when she's She-Hulk. There's like, Jen Walters herself is sort of a lot. But when she's She-Hulk, and, you know, these scenes all happened right after she became She-Hulk, okay? She's a lot. That is the character. If you don't like that, you're just, don't watch the show because it's not for you. That is who she is. That is who she has always been. Always, always, always. She's always been a lot. Now, if you want to argue the execution, all right, fine. But all I kept hearing is it was heavy handed. It was heavy handed. It was heavy handed. She, and, and I actually don't think that's the right term. I think people were emotionally affected and what, what they meant is it was too blunt instrument. And yes, she is absolutely a blunt instrument. You know, some of her lines are just blunt force fucking trauma, right? It's when it's that, I'm sorry I said a uh, an unkind but true thing. And then, then Banner slash Hulk is like, you know, an apology yet doubles down on the original point of the statement. How lawyerly of you. Ding, ding, ding. That is an indication that that is a character point, not the show saying, oh, isn't it great that Jen Walters is treating her cousin like shit? Remember I said people watch two different shows? It seemed like women saw a show that was poking fun or having fun with, like making light of some really unpleasant aspects of a certain strata of womanhood you know that whole dialogue of angry and and fearful and yeah you know I'm better at checking my anger than you because I have to do it all the time that is how a great many women feel and we recognize that sometimes we take that out on people who don't deserve it. Which is what she was doing there. I mean, objectively, Bruce Banner has much greater mental health problems than Jennifer Walters does. 
And the reason I found that whole DBT thing so funny is, you know, DBT is the therapy they they give for psych psychiatric conditions that are are notoriously difficult to treat. It's a method of therapy that that is used for things previously were thought to be uncurable, right? The really serious things like borderline personality disorder and dissociative identity disorder, which Bruce Banner has. So yes, their struggles are not comparable, but she was being an asshole because Jennifer Walters, especially as She-Hulk, is an asshole and she was flopping back and forth there, right? I mean, the whole scene culminates with I, I have my anger under control. I have my anger under control. She finally goes She-Hulk. She didn't have her anger under control. And so women are seeing satire that's funny because it's true. And yet uh, she expressed it obnoxiously. And men were seeing a screed. Now, who's right? Well, shouldn't the... Shouldn't the preferential view be f from the group that those statements are representing and parodying? And then I started getting guys saying, it's not parody. And remember I said it's only first episode? Nobody knows. We don't know where the show is eventually going. And people scream and yell and complain about Mary Sue's, but then we give a character flaws... And, and that that is Jennifer Walters canonically comics. That is her flaw. She just she's a freight train. She just charges forward. Do first think later or think never. OK, she's smart, but she's not wise. She has a complete lack of impulse control. So. She's flawed. The show's not endorsing her view. The, any more than, you know, some of the dick moves that Rick does on Rick and Morty is endorsing his views, right? People like that in real life are awful. And then there's a scene in the sports bar, which even the peeps, even some of the people who backed off on the, the dialogue were really bothered by the sports bar scene. And I admit that really took me aback, like really took me aback. Because the reality is guys like that exist who are, hey, just being friendly, you know, to a woman who clearly doesn't want to talk to them. That doesn't mean all men are like that. There was nothing in the show that said all men are like that. Some men are. That's just fact. And if you don't want us thinking all guys just do that, maybe don't react so strongly to that depiction. And I said to, to one guy, it, it, this one was a very pleasant conversation. I said, look, that seems basically I said, it's not about the nine guys you encounter that are perfectly fine and lovely. It's the 10th who isn't that makes you put every guy through a filter of is this guy going to be a problem? And to me, again, that was dark comedy about the female experience because the whole thing in the bathroom. And yeah, that bathroom scene is going to be a bunch of stuff really lost on guys because it's a woman's bathroom. How many guys have seen the experience of a woman's bathroom? None, right? Uh, fair that that was a sequence where they were prepared to lose people valid choice right I mean if you didn't know what DBT, DBT therapy is you probably didn't find that part as funny as I found it either but you know you guys know I do um, personal narrative work with clients I was in stitches because it to me that was like Someone knew enough about it to nail the details of it, but still, it, it, 
it parodied that this worked so amazing for me. I want to share it with everyone, not realizing how awful it sounds and feels when you're at the beginning of the journey instead at the end. You know that in six to seven years, you know, since I don't have fucking six to seven years. I am out of here. That that is what facing serious trauma or you know serious mental health conditions that is what it's like it just seems so big and so hard you're like nope fuck nope I'm gonna keep repressing and that's not just something women do that's that's something a lot of people do like I think Jen's really in denial and I could be wrong but it is possible it's a it's a first episode, you know, people, some people just scatter shot at everything. Oh, there wasn't enough Titania. It's the first episode, right? Maybe she'll be back. Maybe, you know, hey, there are some episodes where the first, the main villain isn't even in it at all. You know, did we know Agatha Harkness was necessarily totally Agatha Harkness in the first episode? No, she was barely in it. It's the first episode and it was only half an hour long. How much do you expect them to do? Other people said that not doing her origin to the letter was emasculating Bruce Banner. But the shows told from her point of view, incor incorporating the talking to camera elements of the, the, the breaking the fourth wall in the comics, which Jen Walters did before Deadpool. Um... So that was a nice little that was a nice little detail. But if the camera is her confidant and she's unconscious, you don't you don't see anything. But guys, how did she get to Mexico? He carried her there. OK, and this is when, you know, you point this stuff out. If someone goes, all right, good point. No problem. If someone keeps fighting the same fight, then we got a problem because then they're not, there's no back and forth. They're not listening. They're having, they're triggered. That's why I'm specifically saying triggered. And there is a big difference between the reality that some people, some things just hit you sideways for some reason. I mean, all those things I brought up about previous Marvel films just kicked me out of the movie for a while. It, it diminished my enjoyment of it. Am I saying the entire movie was bad because of that one comment or two comments? No. It just, I, I was taken out of it for a while. You can't control that. That's fair. But there is a big difference between I had a bad reaction to that and it's bad because I had a bad reaction to it. Go back to the boys. If something on that show doesn't really disturb you at some point, you might be a psychopath. OK, that that is that is calibrated to hit everybody at some point. Again, fair game. These Disney Plus series are increasingly uh, for more niche, not, not completely niche, but it's not the standard for every one blockbuster movie demographic. Again, why I had issues with some of the dialogue choices, among other reasons, character voice among them, is that... If this is supposed to be something everybody can go and enjoy, you know, shirtless Thor, first of all, doesn't work on me. Second of all, doesn't fucking take away when, as somebody said, you make somebody's identity the enemy or you make someone feel like a joke is being made at a group's expense inappropriately. And even if it's totally in character, it can kick someone out. All right. If you had that reaction, no problem. But having that reaction doesn't make the whole thing bad. There are other parts I absolutely enjoyed about 
uh, the Avengers films. Uh, Civil War is probably my favorite ensemble movie, but, um, you know, just because I didn't like the Drax line, those Drax lines in Guardians of the Galaxy doesn't mean overall I didn't love the shit out of that movie. And that's the other thing. It's saying these points I had issues with versus the whole thing was heavy handed. The belching contest was heavy handed. The slapstick screaming in the car was heavy handed. The guy, the two guys jumping into each other's arms like Scooby and Shaggy, that was heavy handed. The the ongoing Captain America, those were heavy handed. Really? Really? And this is where we get into why this matters. And this is going to be a bit long, but hear me out. There is pent up frustration among women. And again, this is not this is not a moral thing. This is just a see both sides thing. If you want your side to be seen, extend that to other people. Captain Marvel wasn't the greatest movie in the world, but it did not deserve the hate it got. It was mediocre, not terrible. Okay. Kamala Khan certainly did not deserve a review bomb, right? The Black Widow movie, ah, we can't, that was a COVID film. So, I mean, the Black Widow movie wasn't great. And it's funny because that was the one that provoked, I think, the least backlash. And it was the one that actually had patriarchy as the enemy. Even that one, I was like... Oh, this is not doing that justice. Like, oh my God, I'm so tired of this, right? They're not the greatest things in the world. But everybody's going to like and not like certain movies. Like, I thought Eternals was terrible. I know some people who really liked it. All right. You know? No biggie. Um... I'm not getting, I'm not getting pushy. I'm not getting really upset. Uh, to me, The Eternals was laughably, laughably bad. But if people liked it, just just because something, you know, is flawed or something is not high art doesn't mean it can't be enjoyable. And if people like the visuals, if people, you know, um, found things about it that they liked, great. I'm not providing, you know, I had people sending me links to reviewer articles to explain their situation better. And they were also written by men. And the breakdown seemed to be, okay, we understand that some things rubbed you the wrong way. And we know that sucks. We being women. What do you think we've been sitting through up until this point? We don't expect to be 100% comfortable when something is primarily aimed at a male audience. It's not for us, so we watch around it. This is something very definitely aimed at women, just based on where they go with the comedy. So a dissertation on why it wasn't for you doesn't change the fact that it's not for you and not everything's going to be for you. Now, like I said, some guys, especially guys who were, who were, you know, loyal readers of the comic, liked it, enjoyed it. Because they're like, yeah, that's her. And that was the thing that I don't know what to do about it. Because this is not the, the priming from the controversy before the show. I can't stand those because, okay, one... If you see a trailer and you don't like it, don't watch. Like, just don't. If you if if it doesn't look good in the trailer, you don't have to see it. This isn't required viewing. 
But if you didn't like the trailer and then you watch the show, okay, you probably weren't going to like it going in. Stop. Just stop. If you watch something you didn't like in the trailer and you didn't like the show, what did you expect? It's not for you. It's not for you. You know, but I, I do think that a lot of these post, these pre-release brouhaha's do frame it so that people can't enjoy the show because they're so primed to see stuff, to see intentions and shadowy conspiracies and stuff that just, they're actually facts, not in evidence. And if my attitude is... If I know I'm going to hate someone, some, something, I won't watch it. I won't play it. I won't stream it, right? I gotta be open to the idea that I'm going to like it. When I used to review video games, I never took a game for review that I thought I was not gonna like. Either I was neutral on it or I was stoked, but if it was something like, a Call of Duty game or, you know, it's something I actively didn't enjoy. You know, Grand Theft Auto was one I'd never review. The Sims. I'd never review The Sims. I'm not going to like it. What's the point? I'm not the fucking audience. Like, what good would my review be? What What is my opinion worth? Fuck all. I'm not the people who like those games, right? My opinions on The Sims, a specific sim game, are irrelevant. I don't like them. People do. So let someone who actually likes the stuff and understands the stuff, more to the point, review it. And that's what, that's what women, I was really surprised at the Twitter response because normally, you know what, there, there are certain women I talk to a lot about this stuff because we're all big nerds. And normally we get to a point where it's just, it's not we're fucking fighting about this. Like, just whatever, let them scream. But this time, every single woman I knew was like, fuck no, not this one. Enough. This is too much. And it really was because there were certain things in that show that if you don't have the experience, you can't judge. So somebody who's you know, uh, say a, uh, a a trans man who's had that experience in, in women's washrooms pre-transition. Okay, you have a point of reference. But you cannot comment on the quality of a parody when you've never experienced what it's parodying. And so many cisgender dudes were like, no, 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 no. It's like, how do you know what drunk women do in a sports bar bathroom? Answer fucking carefully, right? Because if you know, what were you doing in there, right? That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the crossed line. Not whether you liked it or not. And I'll know if people freak out. Will you say I can't like? No, no, it's not that you didn't like it. Because like I said, if you, you know, I think a lot of people didn't know who wrote it. And so if you're not a fan of Rick and Morty style humor, you're probably not going to like it because it is, it is very much the same. Right? To each their own. But that's not what a lot of people meant when they said heavy handed. And again, like I said, it's the first episode. It could completely shit the bed. And if it completely shits the bed, I will be back here saying it shit the bed. <laughs> the way I did with WandaVision. But come on. This level, what was on the screen did not warrant that level of upset. Unless you insist the show was endorsing of you instead of parodying 
the view. And there's a much better argument for, for Captain Marvel in that regard. The motorcycle scene was just not well executed, right? You can't say that about She-Hulk again, because that's who Jennifer Walters is. That's who she is. It's not an out of character comment the way I believe. And again, subjective, the the lines I took issue previously within Marvel films were right. Stephen Strange is a dick. He's a dick, right? I can't really complain about him being a dick. He's canonically a dick. You know, Spider-Man being awkward. I'm not going to complain. Oh, that's so cringe. Peter Parker's awkward. These are the characters. If you're complaining that Jen Walters is Jen Walters, that's not really a strong complaint. And the problem with that is you're not letting Jen be Jen. You're like, this is a woman speaking. Therefore, she represents all women and represents the female view. And that doesn't happen to male characters. And that's what is ironically angering about that perspective. Hopefully this makes sense. I know people will miss the point. Not all men, only the first episode. If I'm not describing you, then this isn't about you. And you know what? I shouldn't have to say this. And it's telling that I do have to say this. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching. And please don't hulk out in the comments section.